Welcome back to Oakhaven. Uh, today we're going to talk about treating Japanese stilt grass with various um, pretty dilute concentrations of glyphosate. Uh, glyphosate is a, a non-selective herbicide, so the problem with using glyphosate on Japanese stilt grass is that glyphosate kills off anything. Anything that has leaves available at the time, um, it will kill it off and it will uh, translocate down into the roots and it will kill off the whole plant. Uh, it doesn't have a root um, or a soil activity so that it doesn't kill off things that are not up and in leaf, you know, spring ephemerals and things like that. But anything that has leaves, if the glyphosate gets on it, it kills it. So um, we did some test plots. Um, we've got another video that we talked about uh, treatments of uh, Japanese stilt grass, and we did some test plots where we tried a 0.5% solution of glyphosate, which looked like it did really well on killing off the uh, the Japanese stilt grass. Unfortunately, it also seemed like it killed off some other things in the area. Uh, my goal is to not have to be killing off the other things in the in the woods. I would like to specifically kill off just the Japanese stilt grass. Uh, generally, what we do for that is that we use a an herbicide called Acclaim Extra. Acclaim Extra is a grass-specific herbicide. Uh, it does a good job of killing off the Japanese stilt grass, but it leaves all of the broadleaf forbs uh, that it comes in contact with um, untouched. So it uh, it's leaves that healthy, and it doesn't kill off. It doesn't seem to kill off um, perennial grasses too. In the woods here, we have some perennial grasses that we would rather keep. Um, so it doesn't seem to kill off those either. So it seems like a, a like a magic bullet a little bit for uh, killing off the Japanese stilt grass. The downside of using the Acclaim Extra is that it's fairly expensive. Uh, it's expensive in two ways. One is a bottle, a pint bottle of the concentrate is about $100 once you pay for shipping and handling and all of that. It, you don't t it doesn't take very much to make up the solution that you need. We use about 9 milliliters per gallon of solution. So you can make up a lot out of that pint bottle. Um, it ends up being about $1.65 a gallon. Um, to use as a working solution, which is pretty reasonable if you think about it. But if you only have a small yard, spending $100 on a jar of, of concentrate may be too much. So we were looking for options uh, using things that are more readily available. Glyphosate is obviously more readily available. You can buy that in any big box store or hardware store or a lot of places. So, um, but we don't want to have the we don't want to have the, the the negative impact of killing off other things with the glyphosate. So what we've learned, or what we've been told at any rate, is that if you use a, um, a low concentration, 0.1, 0.2% of glyphosate, it will not kill off the other plants, but it will kill off the Japanese stiltgrass. Uh, Japanese stiltgrass is a, a pretty weak, it's an annual grass, so it kills pretty easily. Um, the perennial plants in the area that have a, a substantial root system they, it, they don't seem to be killed as much by the low levels of glyphosate. At least that's what we've been told. Our goal is to try to find out whether that's true or not. As we're walking down to the test plots, I wanted to show you this area because this area this summer was full of Japanese stilt grass. It was very dense all through here. And I went through pretty much, I don't remember exactly when it was date-wise, but it was after it had come up. Um, but well before it had seeded or anything like that. But it was obvious where the Japanese stilt grass was. And I came through and treated this whole area with a claim extra. As you can see, there's a lot of other vegetation here that was not killed by using the acclaim extra, which is exactly what we want. And if you compare it to Julie, if you kind of scan up there, you can see what it looks like on that slope. The vegetation looks very similar to what it is down here. So I don't think that it had, I don't have any quantitative numbers for you, unfortunately but I don't think that it had much of a negative impact on the other things that were growing here. But it did seriously knock back the Japanese stilt grass. Um, I came back a few weeks later. Most of the Japanese stilt grass was dead. Um, unfortunately, because Japanese stilt grass is an annual, it grows up from seed. There were things that hadn't germinated yet, or maybe they were hidden underneath leaves, um, but we had missed some. So we treated again the second time this summer and went through and just spot treated. And it has pretty much cleared up everything. I walked through here and I found maybe two or three plants that I just hand picked. Japanese stilt grass um, weeds by hand very easily. It pulls up and I can stick it into a bag and take it back. Um, but I feel like this whole area is pretty much saved 
from Japanese stilt grass, so I feel pretty good about that. But again, that's using the Acclaim Extra, um, which is fairly expensive. So um, we want to do our test plots. We want to check out our test plots um, to, to see how the, the glyphosate works. Let's head down, down this way. As we're walking down here, I wanted to show this other area that we treated again with the Acclaim Extra, and you can see what it looks like once it's treated. So, um, Julie, if you could kind of come in and get a close-up. In along this, this patch of, of uh, honeysuckle that we've killed, you can see the dead stilt grass, and it tends to take on this kind of purpley hue when it's killed with the Acclaim Extra. Uh, so this is all dead. It was pretty dense through here, um, and nothing had set seed. Nothing had started to flower by the time we sprayed it, and nothing had set seed. It looks uh, pretty good. And I look at the other things. There's a lot of other things growing in the area. There's no immediate, immediately obvious things that have been killed off by the Acclaim Extra that I didn't want to want killed off. You know, as we walk down towards the, the test plots down here, I want you to look over here at this area that um, we've cleared out. The honeysuckle and the white snake root has taken over, um, growing in very healthy. But I want you to look at the condition of the white snake root, because it, you can see that the, the leaves generally are starting to dry up, but they're generally pretty green. The plants have, have flowered and are setting seed. They've got those little fluffy seeds that are going to go everywhere. Um, but just put, put in your mind what this looks like, uh, because when we get down to the, the test plots, I want you to be able to compare what it looks like uh, in the untreated areas compared to the areas that we treated. Okay, so uh, as Kimber steps over this Tree of Heaven log that we used as our marker, this is a Tree of Heaven that we killed in a, in a previous video on treating Tree of Heaven. So. Um, you can see what using the heck and squirt does on a tree of heaven, a uh, good sized tree. Um, so this area here that, that Kimber is sitting on was treated with 0.3% uh, of glyphosate mixed with a <clears throat> just a standard surfactant. This is an upland setting. Um, glyphosate by itself is pretty aquatic friendly. It doesn't kill fish and things like that. So it, it's, it's, um, it's certified for use in lakes and aquatic areas, but the surfactant, that the, the, the standard, like a Roundup um, formulation uses, the surfactant uh, will kill off aquatic life. So if you're using glyphosate in an aquatic situation or in an area where it's going to be running off into a stream, you need to use an aquatic friendly formulation with a different surfactant. Because this is an upland area, we just used a standard uh, surfactant that we would normally use with glyphosate. So this is a 0.3 percent glyphosate. And as I look through here, um, all of the stilt grass is dead and looking straw-like. Um, so it, it was very successful, 0.3 percent. Um, not surprising, the 0.5 percent was successful. The 0.3 is also successful. What I want you to notice, though, is that if you look at the, the white snake root, the white snake root, there's no green leaves on any of the white snake root. Now, white snake root is a pretty weak perennial. You know, hopefully this is still alive in the roots, um, but it could be that it killed it back to the roots. I don't know. We won't know that until next year. Um, if it did kill it back to the roots, obviously there's plenty of seeds that it will... Um, we, we're not going to lose out on our white snake root. But it does concern me a little bit at 0.3%. If it damaged the white snake root, what else was here that may have been damaged by the 0.3%? It's, it's a trade-off. Um, if we go up the slope a little bit, this is an area that was treat, treated with 0.2% coming through here and all through here. And again, the Japanese stilt grass is completely dead. And I walked through this area before. I could not find any live Japanese stilt grass or any Japanese stilt grass that lived long enough um, to, to set seed. So 0.2% was, was successful. But again, the white snake root, all of the leaves on the white snake root are pretty much dead. So let's go up a little bit. We're going to go into the next area, which is was a 0.1%. Kind of awkward test plots because we're, we're working on the slope here. But if you go into this area of 0.1%, 
Japanese stilt grass is all dead. Again, I could not find any live Japanese stilt grass in this area or any that had been alive. You know, we did this on September 11th and it is now October 20th. So it's been over a month. Um, it is not, Japanese stilt grass around us um, is starting to die off. It is um, set seed, the seeds are formed, some of them have dropped, some of them are waiting for the plants to die. So, but Japanese stilt grass doesn't look particularly healthy right now, but it definitely doesn't look like this. Um, so it, it definitely killed it all off and there's no seeds that were, were set. That was our, our goal. So the Japanese stilt grass seems like it was killed off and the white snake root looks noticeably healthier. Still some that look dead, some that look live. It's a trade-off, you know? We're getting to the point where we're having less impact on the rest of the environment, and we're getting done with what we, what we want to get done, which is to kill the Japanese stilt grass. So 0.1% seems like a pretty effective man manner of, uh, of killing it off. We will probably continue to use the Acclaim Extra when we're treating the woods, just because I'm a little gun-shy of what else was cleared off, or cleaned off, sorry, killed off. Um, other than the white snake root down here. Maybe there's other plants that were killed off. Maybe there's little um, saplings and other uh, fall flowers that were, were killed off. I don't necessarily want to take that risk. Um, so I will probably, in the, at least the upland areas, um, be using Acclaim Extra. <coughs> Excuse me, Acclaim Extra is also one that is not aquatic friendly. Um, it can be poisonous if it gets into the stream. So we don't want to use it down uh, close to the stream. I would say that our takeaway from this is that we will probably use the Acclaim Extra up in the upland areas and then in the areas down by the stream uh, we will probably use a 0.1% glyphosate with a uh, um, an, an aquatic friendly surfactant. What we use in that situation is Shore Clear Plus. It's made for shoreline, clearing shorelines. Um, I realize we've had a lot of comments that people have problems finding the Shore Clear Plus. You can also just buy a glyphosate that doesn't have a surfactant in it and then mix a, a, an aquatic friendly surfactant into it. Um, you'd have to do some research as to what the, what the best way is to do that. So that's our conclusion. I wanted you to see what's going on. There's no reason to use a 2% glyphosate on um, Japanese stilt grass when a 0.1% will work. That does a number of things for you. It's a lot less uh, chemical going off into the environment, plus it's a lot cheaper. You go from spending $1.25 per gallon for a 2% down to $0.06 cents a gallon for a 0.1%. $0.06 cents a gallon is pretty cheap for glyphosate, so you could cover a lot of area if you've got a big area. Obviously, our goal is to, to recognize these things, and I want everybody that's out there to be telling their friends and family what Japanese stilt grass looks like so that when they have small patches of it in their yard, they're taking care of it in small patches rather than letting it grow. And it's like, oh, I didn't know what that was until it has taken over their yard, taken over their woodland, taken over whatever their, uh, their natural area is. We really need to get on top of these things because it's a lot easier when it's a, when it's a small infestation than when it takes over. So. So basic question, how do you get a 0.1% or 0.2%, 0.3% uh, solution of glyphosate to be used? We buy glyphosate in a 41% concentrate in a two and a half gallon jug. Not for everyone, I understand, but you can buy a concentrate 41% um, in a quart or pint size um, jar. You can buy it at Lowe's, I believe. Um, you can definitely buy it online um, and then you would dilute it down. So how would you dilute it down? You don't have to start with 41%. You could go into probably your local grocery store and buy a version of glyphosate that's maybe 1% or 2%. If you get a 1%, obviously a 0.1% is a tenth, so you can dilute that bottle 10 parts of, uh, of water um, and one part of, of solution there. Not exactly right, but close enough uh, to be 0.1%. Uh, um, if you have something, some odd number that you want to... Um, dilute down to the 0.1%. The formula is the concentration you're looking for, in this case the 0.1, times the volume you're looking for. So if you're looking for a gallon of solution, you could say 128 ounces of material. So that times that, divided by whatever your solution is, whether it's 2% or 41% or 1%. So if you divide that out and it gives you the number of ounces you need in that gallon of water to make a 0.1%. 
I will write this out someplace on the screen. There should be a place uh, where that formula is in there, and, and maybe I'll put it into the, the notes also. We also have a video on how to mix these things up if you're interested in it, where we go into more detail about how to measure, how to get those numbers correctly. So anyway, I thought that would be useful for people. Hopefully you learned something. If you have comments, uh, I would love to have them in the comment section. We haven't been great about uh, answering comments. I apologize for that. We've had a really busy summer. So um, if you know uh, better than I do, like if you have some quantitative information about how 0.1% works on killing off other things, you know, my observation was that it seems to be better than 0.2%, but 0.2% seems to be killing off things. Start a conversation. Let me know what you've, you've found in that situation. If you have other solutions on things that you do, let us know, start a conversation. I appreciate it. Anyway, thanks for coming along.